we continue our study of conic sections with ellipses. Join me for Pre-Calculus Online now. In section 10.3, we look at ellipses. We'll start with the definition of an ellipse. An ellipse is the set of points P in the plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points to the points P is constant. So basically, let's suppose that we have these two points that are the fixed points. These fixed points are called foci, and that's the plural of the word focus. And the ellipse is going to look like this. So what happens is you pick a point on the ellipse, and if you add these distances together, here plus here, then it equals to some constant. And then if I draw another one, then that would be equal to the same constant. Perhaps another one, maybe it goes this way and over this way. And you take the set of all of these points that go around the two foci and they create the ellipse. The key is that the distances from the two individual fixed points to the points on the ellipse add up to be this constant number. Now let's take a look at the equation and see what we can get out of that. So the basic equation of your ellipse is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. So we need to have a 1 on the right side. Now this is sort of just the bare basics of the ellipse. We're assuming a couple of things here, that the a is greater than the b in this case, and that's going to create a certain orientation. The A is known as the semi-major axis length. And that corresponds to sort of the long way that the ellipse is drawn. So here is the center, and the center is the origin in this case. There's no shifting yet. And the A is going to be the distance from the center to a vertex. And let's call that vertex number two. We'll call this one vertex number one. So we have the vertices. Now notice that if I go from the complete uh, vertex on the left all the way over to the vertex on the right, then this is actually equal to 2a. And so 2a is the major axis length. And this 2a is that constant from the definition. So we know what the constant is. It's 2a. We also have a b from the equation, and that's the semi-minor axis length. And of course, 2b is the minor axis length. 
So the major axis goes the long way, the minor axis goes the short way. The minor axis also results in two points at the ends here, which we call B1 and B2, and those are known as the co-vertices. And you won't find that in the book, but we do that in my class. Helps us to draw the ellipse. So V's are vertices and V's are co-vertices. Now what about the foci? Well, the foci are going to be right in here somewhere. So we're going to have F1 and F2. And then let's look at the foci and their relationship to everything else. So we're going to have a B right here as the semi-minor axis length. And B1 is in a position that makes it symmetric with the ellipse. So if I draw these two segments, from F1 to B1 back to F2, we know that the length of the total length of that segment is 2a. That's the definition of an ellipse. The total sum from the two fixed points, the foci, to any point on the ellipse adds up to 2a, a constant. Well, I'm just now picking B1 to be that point. But since we have symmetry, that means each side is A and A. That's not going to be true for every point on the ellipse. You're going to have some longer and some shorter, but because this is right in the middle, it's A and A. We call the focal distance C on an ellipse. So C is equal to the focal distance. And now we need to figure out what is the relationship between the A and the B that you're going to see in the equations here, and C, the focal distance. Let me draw that picture down here so you can see it, just the important part here. So here was A, here was focus number two, here was the center, and this was B1, the covertex at a distance of b, and here's a distance of c. Well, you can see it now. It's the Pythagorean theorem. So we have b squared plus c squared is equal to a squared. So you, you got to be a little careful here. The a and the b and the c are probably not the way you're used to thinking about the Pythagorean theorem, because the a and the b and the c all have very specific meanings with an ellipse. So if I solve this for c squared, I get a squared minus b squared. This is the one that you're going to want to remember for the ellipse. It's the semi-major axis length squared minus the semi-minor axis length squared. That is equal to the focal distance squared. One thing to remember for the ellipse, the equation that produces an ellipse must have a plus sign right here in the middle. And the equation for the focal distance has the opposite sign right here, has a negative. Well, that's good, but let's see it in action. Example number one, analyze the equation and graph x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9 is equal to 1. So here we're going to have a is equal to 5 because the denominator here is in the form of a squared. The denominator under the y squared is b squared, so that means b is equal to 3. And I like to graph this as I go along. It sort of helps me to organize my thoughts. We have no shift. So the center is still the origin. 
we know that the vertices are at the ends of the major axis. The length of the semi-major axis is 5. So that means we're going to go out 5 from the center. So we're going to have V1 and V2. V2 is going to be 5 comma 0, 5 units from the center, and then 5 units from the center on the left would be V1, and that's negative 5 comma 0. The covertices are going to be on the minor axis away from the center. The semi-minor axis length is 3, so we're going to go up 3 from the center. That'll be V1 is 0, 3, and B2 is 0, negative 3. Let's draw the ellipse. Something like that. Let's find the focal distance. The equation is c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So that would be 25 minus 9 is equal to 16. So c is equal to 4. That means the foci are 4 units away from the center. I'll put them here. It's F2 and here. F1. So F1 is negative 4 comma 0 and F2 is 4 comma 0. Let's go ahead and write down the major axis length. That is double the A, so we get 10, and the minor axis length is double the B, so that's 6. Let's look at example number two, analyze the equation, and graph. 16x squared plus y squared equals 16. Well, notice that we have a 16 on the right side, so it's not quite in the form that we need to analyze the ellipse. So I just need to produce a 1 on the right side. What number do we divide by 16 to produce a 1? A 16. And so now you can divide each portion by 16. And that's going to give us x squared plus y squared over 16 is equal to 1. Now in this case, the number under the x squared is 1, which means that number without the square is going to be a 1. And the number under y squared is 16, meaning that number without the square part is really 4. It's 4 squared. In an ellipse, whichever one is bigger determines which one is A. So the A actually comes from the Y part this time, and the B comes from the X part. What this does when the A is bigger, is it's by definition the bigger part, but when it's under the Y, then it creates an orientation that is more vertical than it is horizontal. So we're going to be looking at something more like this. All right. Let's analyze. So, draw a graph. First thing we notice is that there are no shifting. So the center is at 0, 0. The vertices are 4 units away from the center, but they're vertically away from the center. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll call this V1 and V2. And we can just label these since everything is in the center. 
we can label it with plus or minus. The co-vertices are one unit away from the center in the horizontal direction, B1 and B2. And again, I'll use plus or minus, plus or minus one comma zero. I'll go ahead and draw the ellipse. Let's find the focal distance. So c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. That's equal to 16 minus 1, which is 15. So the focal distance is the square root of 15. In some cases, you have to do a little bit of approximating in your head. Square root of 15 is just short of 4 because it's very close to square root 16, but it's smaller. So it's about 3 point something 8, something like that. I'm not looking for entirely accurate numbers here. I'll go ahead and mark the vertices here, F1 and F2. And then we can label them here. F1 and 2 are 0, and then plus or minus root 15. And then finally, the major axis length is twice the A, so that's 8. And the minor axis length is 2. But do note that the major axis is now vertical, and the minor axis is horizontal. Let's take a look at shifted equation of the ellipse. So it's basically the same, but we do x minus h before we square it, and then we do y minus k squared in parentheses is equal to 1. So with this, the center is now h comma k. So please note that you are doing the opposite of what you see. It's x minus h and y minus k. It's the same as a circle from college algebra. And so maybe here is h and here is k. This is now the center, h comma k. And then you have an ellipse around that. Example 3. Analyze the equation and graph. x minus 1 squared over 4 plus y plus 3 quantity squared over 36 is equal to 1. So the a is going to be 6. The ellipse is going to be oriented vertically. b is going to be 2. But we have a new center. And the center is going to be 1 comma negative 3. So you just pick up the 1 from the x. The y is a little more difficult. You have to think about this as y minus negative 1 quantity squared in the numerator. And so the k is actually negative 3. Let's draw a picture. So it's going to be 1 and then negative 3. And here's our center. Let's find the vertices. So vertex 1 is going to be 6 units away from the center, but in a vertical fashion. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so that means it's going to have the same x value, but it's going to be 6 units away from negative 3. Negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3. The second vertex is still at x equals 1. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units down from the center. And negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9.
Next, the covertices B1 and B2 are two units away from the center, but horizontally. So we'll take the x component of the center, 1, and subtract 2. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The y coordinate stays the same. And for B2, we take 1 and add 2, and we get 3. Y component stays the same. Oops. And there's the ellipse. Let's find the focal distance. So it's a squared minus b squared. It's 36 minus 4. It's 32. Take the square root and simplify, and you get 4 root 2. So that means the foci are 4 root 2 units away from the center in the y direction. So focus number 1 is going to be 1 comma negative 3 plus 4 root 2. And focus number 2 is going to be 1 comma negative 3 minus 4 root 2. And again, you have to use some estimating. The square root of 32 is between 5 and 6. So we'll just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a little bit for the first focus, and then the same thing for the second focus. The major axis length is 12. The minor axis length is 4. Example 4. Find the equation of ellipse whose center is 1, 5, one focus is at 6, 5, and one vertex is at 8, 5. Now let me just draw what we have here. We have the center at 1, 5. Well, that tells me a lot already. It tells me that the equation is going to be x minus 1 squared over something plus y minus 5 squared over something is equal to 1. I just need to figure out what the rest of this is and figure out what the orientation of the ellipse is. We have a vertex at 8, 5. And here's 8. Here is the vertex. And the distance from the center to the vertex is 7. So that tells me that A is equal to 7. And since it is horizontal, it goes under the x. 7 squared is 49. Next, we know that the focus is at 6, 5. So I'll mark 6 here. And the distance from the center to the focus is 5 units. Well, that's little c is equal to 5. Now that doesn't really tell me what goes in the equation. I have to use the focal distance equation to figure that out. So c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. I want b squared this time, so I'll solve this equation for b squared and get a squared minus c squared. But we now know that a squared is 49. From the focus, we know that c is 5, so c squared is 25, and so b squared is equal to 24. Now, you might be tempted to solve for b, which is fine, but you're really just looking for b squared, because b squared is what goes in the equation. So there you go.